And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Unyielding Hecarim. You may remember us playing this last week and it was really sweet. We have like some um, aggressive elements of the deck with uh, some ephemeral stuff. You know, we have like these Haunted Relic, Shark Chariots, Oblivious Islander, making some stuff cost less. You know, we got we got like this this small ball game of, you know, even Caretaker in here with, uh, you know, all this little stuff. But then uh, we get to pair that with a, a pretty awesome mid and late game. You know, mid game, you know, we're looking at uh, Radiant Guardian and Thresh being big roadblocks for our opponent. Hecarim, of course, just being a huge threat, can do a lot of damage, especially when it levels up and gets that bonus. And then our top end, Unyielding Spirit on any of like these cards is just amazing. Unyielding Spirit on Radiant Guardian or Thresh or Hecarim. It's just incredible. And then, um, you know, a Harrowing bringing everything back. Pretty nice little deck here. Um, you know, uh, yeah. So we had a lot of success with Hecarim last week. Today, so far, uh, we had a lot of uh, a lot of bad luck with Hecarim earlier. But we're going to make up for that right here, right now. Hecarim, uh, second time today. Here we go. What's my highest rank ever? I think it was... Seven, I think, maybe. Definitely single digits. I, I, I kind of feel like seven. Like that's the first number that comes to mind. All right, so at least Darius is going to be pretty aggressive. I don't know if we'll have time for Unyielding Spirit. I definitely want Radiant Guardian, and I like this start. The problem is, is these don't really go that well together. You know, we can't play Shark Chariot on two and then Caretaker it. Maybe actually we get rid of Shark Chariot against the aggro deck. I'm basically looking for something to caretaker on turn two where we don't get to, or you know, on turn three, we need a caretaker, so we need to play something else. Well, Let me show hmm. you what I can do. yeah, Shark Chariot would definitely be better than Vengeance. <laughs> so we're looking like we got getting punished for that. Crimson Disciple, huh? This isn't great. Not great. Okay, thanks, Dr. Grindel. Come here, darling. Look what you
Oh, that's right. I can't can't actually make that block here. This is just awkward. We got to turn on Radiant Guardian. Most important thing, we just got to do that. Got to get this thing in play. Hey, Fresh Lobster! Thanks for the big time raid there, man. Welcome everybody from Fresh Lobster Stream. We are playing some Unyielding Spirit Hecarim as our current deck of choice. Now we're we're in a tough spot because we're at five against Elise Darius, so we're in a tough spot. Um, especially if especially if they have um, if they have their own glimpse beyond that they get to block Radiant Guardian and then sacrifice. That's going to be a problem. But I can't really do anything about that. I can't, you know, I can't make them take damage from Radiant Guardian currently. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, man. Yeah, you have a good one, too. Yep, and that's exactly what they had. Was well, Glimpse Beyond, of course, because that was the worst possible thing for us to see. So it's guaranteed that they had it. Come closer. I don't fight. Let me change into something more comfortable. Never mind, not, not only did they have that, but they also had two more spiders and an Elise. It's negative seven, huh? No, 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 no! Honestly, there's a good chance that the Grassy on Dying should just be going after the Crimson Disciple um, to you know get that out of the way for whenever I try to Withering Whale. All right, that worked out. That worked out quite well. Back up to ten. So if you're kind of newer to the channel, this is what I do um, every day. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. Those days I stream early at 11 a.m. Eastern. And Tuesday, Thursday, uh, Saturday, I stream at 4 p.m. Eastern. Um, I have the attack token. So yeah, we could go Unyielding Spirit on the Radiant Guardian. I'm going with this. So, okay. So my thinking was go with this so that I attack with Radiant Guardian, and then if they have Glimpse Beyond, then we get to Vile Feast, like, you know, because they chump block with these, one of these 1-1s, one then we Vile, you know, then we 
get that back. You know, all that kind of stuff. But if they had Glimpse Beyond, they definitely would have played it the last turn if they had it. They would have had to just draw it this turn, so that's not too likely. We'll just play this Ephemeral Spirit instead, get these Shark Chariots up and going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Fresh Lobster is a great streamer. Yeah, I uh, send my viewers over to him all the time. He does a great job. All this maniacal laughter. fresh. No, I should have saved that over that unyielding spirit. Our deck's called Unyielding Hecarim, not Unyielding Radiant Guardian. Take it all. No blocks. Hey, Yanto. Yeah, yep. Overwhelm does. Like with with the overwhelm, you only need to assign enough damage that would that would uh, kill it health wise, and then the rest of the damage can trample over to the, the enemy nexus. So even if you have an unyielding spirit um, on on something... Oh, I guess that was my quest for today, was winning a game with Demacia. Well, there we go. One played, one won. Um, yeah, that was a good comeback. No, so they can't take... It. Yeah, so you're only, you're only required to... Uh, Sign that much damage. You can do the rest of the Nexus. It'll just be that the other thing doesn't take damage and doesn't die. Fiora Karma. I feel like Fiora's gonna kill me. I hope not. Please don't have Fiora. If, if I could choose anything, it would be my opponent not drawing the card Fiora. You can draw anything else. You can draw Karma, you can draw whatever else you want. Just please don't draw the card. Fiora. Let's see. Hmm. Three mana next turn. Please don't draw the card Fiora. Please don't play it. Fresh catch? Well, it was fresh. No. For a worthy no. We're somewhere in Masters rank. We started at like 270-ish today, but then, you know, lost a whole lot to start the day, and so now we're at like 7-something. Hmm. I never tried. They cannot hide. 
if I would have played the one mana Shark Chariot last turn, we would have had to bank the two spell mana and be able to Wraith Caller. Okay, we were at 617 after last game. Cool. Yeah, so at least we have the Glimpse Beyonds that kind of slow down a Fiora a little bit. Ooh. That's a good card to get Will of Ioniad. Can we draw more Glimpse Beyonds, please? Okay, okay, we'll take that. That's worth it. Just got a deny out of their hand, that's worth it. Spending a whole lot of mana to deal with Fiora. But I think it's worth it. Because I don't want to cast I won't want to cast Ruination after we play Hecarim. For example. Alright, so they We killed Fiora, but they got to draw lots and lots of cards. All right, so I can, you know, so I can just go Hecarim and then go to attacks, and like that plays great. Except for if they have, if they go Will of Ionia, bounce my Hecarim. That's pretty meh. Let's go Wraith Caller. Get a Mist Wraith. River shape the land and give it life. River Shaper. This card's kind of annoying. This card's kind of annoying. There you are. A gift from the river folk. So yes, they get to they get to draw more spells, but at least they're not killing me like Fiora does. At least not at this current juncture in time. You never know. Could be a Fiora right here. Water changes but never breaks. I want to give them more reasons to spend their mana and not bounce my Hecarim. More opportunity to. It's like if I just pass and do nothing, then maybe they just pass back. Sweep them away. Darn. Yeah, they're just gonna be passing. Well, let's play it. No will. 
Me poor old luck. Poor old luck. Bleh. Alright, poor luck for this turn, no will. No will. Where there's no will, there's no way. Okay, so the past. So now... I think I just attack like this, right? Like, Judgment... So let's just assume they have Judgment. So like, if they have Judgment, they're just gonna kill everything anyway. Do I wanna send in this like hapless aristocrat and get it killed? To start clearing it off the battlefield? If they're willing to pass here, I guess I could probably play Cursed Keeper and then let Cursed Keeper die. We can kind of assume this is going to be just Judgment and they draw just a ton of spells. But we're going to force them to have that. Strike, we will reform. Will all these spells just get burnt? Because they can't hold that many in their hand. What it's not Fiora. Take? A gift from the river folk. What form will the waters take? Yeah, start burning all these. A gift from the river folk. Okay. Second deny gone. Yep, see a health potion. As one, Ionia speaks through me. We will not stand by. They want to bury your life steal. Yeah, like they want to bury your life steal. So they go to ten. Which I guess we let them do that. You can just take the five. Yeah, you can. I mean, you can push to masters with Kinku elusives. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good deck. The thing I have to be worried about with playing Thresh first is that if they play Fiora, like if they just, you know, like they've they've drawn tons of spells, like they, you know, they're drawn towards the other Fioras. If they have another judgment with Fiora, we have to be worried about that. Besides that, I can just attack. 
like this. Um, them down. Still kill them? Because I think this gets rid of the barrier. I think this gets rid of the barrier. And then this will die, they'll gain 11, go to 16. Oh, but then these these will go down plus, yeah, they'll go down to two. So it'll be just two, four, five, six, seven damage. Kind of starting the game over. <laughs> yeah, Karma's pretty powerful. Hey, Mamba Man. Yeah, Karma, pretty powerful. Not a bad one. Oh, yeah, sure. Knowledge springs from many sources. It hasn't really helped that three of our last four draws have been what? Curse Keeper. Have our last four draws been Curse Keeper, Thresh. The last five, have, have they just been like these five cards here? I think they have, right? Hapless Aristocrat, Cursed Keeper, Thresh, Cursed Keeper, Oblivious Islander. I think those have been our last five. Because four of those cards do nothing. Thresh is cool. Do not question our results. I guess they're just showing off by playing all those other spells for the additional power. Oh, hello there. I, of course, want to play this on uh, my attack turn, bring back the sharks. No, they're not going to self-deck. It's impossible for them to self- you, Karma Karma cannot ever mill out. It's, it's impossible. They have, they have four other Karmas in the deck right now. And they'll just play a karma and get two more. Hmm. I wish I had more room for this. I mean, basically, if I play Harrowing, we just get two Hecarims back, right? Do I just do that and get two Hecarims back? instead and attack with all these I I don't know maybe I don't know why I'm like worried about deny I must get out of here by 
I want more of these things to die. Right, kill my hapless aristocrats and everything. Kill all these little things. Yeah, so two denies are gone. Peace has its cost. It's like a huge waste of another spirit's refuge. This isn't really that much damage. I don't know, I guess I guess so. We can do that we can do a lot more damage than that though, like that 16 life doesn't matter that much. Alright, let's have some more things die. We must make our own Remember, there's, their karma has tough. That's not like I, I can't block with the abomination and trade. Their karma has tough. Topher with the raid. What's up, Topher? Oh, heck. Welcome, welcome, everybody from Topher stream. So yeah, we could Radiant Guardian with Life steal tough, but I want to want to cast this harrowing. Yeah, you started you started me on a, a bad path. You you beat me like that first the first match that we played, you won with that, and then I just kept on losing super close games, you know, five times in a row with the ephemeral mid range. I was really sad. But we've been doing good since then. Yeah, and that game wasn't even the closest game that I played. <laughs> oh, that one was so close. I lost, like, my next game I lost because, uh, like, I was going to have, like, lethal with, like, Hecarim and everything, and they had no cards in hand. But it was, like, the Puff Cap deck, and I drew lethal Puff Caps <laughs> to, to kill, to die. That's why we lost the next one. Is it worth attacking with this thing? Over other things? I guess so. Yeah, it's probably... Probably is. If only we could keep on going even wider and wider. I guess I should probably be attacking with the 10 power first. Okay, that's all you need tips for is Vimerdinger. Okay, yeah, it will be up at, it will be up in two hours on YouTube. Two things, Colby. Yeah, it'll be up on two hours on YouTube. But then also, um, check out uh, Meta World Gaming. I think they, I think they have a YouTube also. They have a Twitch stream where all they do is play. Um, All they do is play uh, Vimerdinger. Like, here's a, a video of them talking about it and everything. And such unrefined style. So yeah, if you want to know more about about that deck, Meta World Gaming plays that a lot. Like they they. Just like continually take more and more uh, accounts to masters. Like they'll just start a new account, play that deck some more, go from iron to masters with it. No, that's not even lethal. I really should have attacked with that 10 power thing before the Hecarim. Ugh. I messed up that, that attack order. Should not have attacked with the Hecarim first. I knew it right after I attacked, I said it. 
but yeah. Ugh. At least they should be out of the lifesteal stuff, right? They've cast three of them at least. At least three of them. But yeah, they've they've cast a bunch of them. I will put you down. Oh god! Do not question our resolve. Yeah, we still have the sharks for next turn. Yeah, no, we're as long as they don't gain life and or kill me with Fiora, we should be good. Oh, I guess I could have blocked that thing. Justice will be served. I think they've played three single combats, right? Ugh. That's a double rally? Are you kidding me? That's the card that's a card they created with Karma's Inside of Ages was Rally, so now they get Oh wait, yeah, it's still only one attack. Okay. Whew, never mind. Okay. I was freaking out that they're gonna get two attacks with this Fiora. Okay, just one attack still. Okay. Yeah, you can't double rally, right? I was freaking out. Yeah, I could get sharks back, but then the sharks would be after this, and there's there's no point in having a shark after Fiora, right? Because once Fiora strikes, the game's over. It's too late for you. Oh come on! Don't have another life steal card. I've already played three of them. That took a lot. That took a lot to win that game. But we're 2-0. 544. We're getting back up there. We're getting back up there. Dude, that game was so intense. GG's. Yeah, that was... Probably, a, probably like a 25-minute game. Hammerdinger as real. Which unfortunately means. Hmm, I don't want to give like Hecarim ephemeral. Sweet. Got the curse keeper. I was going to say, uh, for, unfortunately, like with this Ionia symbol over here, it kind of means that I need to mulligan that unyielding spirit. Remember when we cast Ruination? Oh, hello there. I swear that was like three hours ago, whenever we cast Ruination on that Fiora. That was forever ago. Peace. 
This thing only does attack for one. It's not like I have to play it and then attack. I can just play it on their turn. It's only attacking for one. Play this thing that attacks for two. Two is more than one. No. All right, well, it's turn three. I don't get to do anything again until turn six. <laughs> we draw, I guess this is our card we can play on turn four is Hapless Aristocrat. Worst card in our deck. certainly see arguments to not even playing Hapless Aristocrat. Leaving the space for things that are useful. Is it possible to invite people to play against to be friends? Um, yes, I think, I think you need your Riot ID. That sounds, that sounds like what you need is a Riot ID. But yeah, you can you can get like people on a friends list somehow. I've never tried it at all, so I don't I don't know much about it. The whole friends list thing, to be honest. Hmm. I'm gonna force them to have Will of Ionia. I hope, I hope they don't have it. But I'm gonna force them to, because if, you know, if they don't, like, sure, they could have you know, multiple burn spells to take out Hecarim. You know, like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the pressure on. I'm not gonna play scared. Let's go for it. And if they do have a whole bunch of interaction and, and everything, and, and then make a whole bunch of turrets, you know, then we'll have Ruination also. We're not gonna play scared. We're going to force him to have it. Alright, got two for one. Kind of. Not really, because they just make all these turrets. Probably about ruination time. The great part about Heck or the great part about uh, Heimerdinger. I mean, it looks like they just spent three cards to deal with my Hecarim, but you know they still have two extra cards in hand than I do, and now they have just a full battlefield. So ruination. I have deny. Yes, that is pl that is in the works of having spectator availability.
And that's something that should come at some point this year. There's no like deadline on it or anything. It's just in the works right now. Wish I had the mana to just you know go from ruination to harrowing right after. I didn't play scared. I forced them to have all that stuff, and they did. They had a, they had the perfect dangers to what I had going on. And Time Redinger wins. You can play Time Redinger and answer all of your opponent's cards at the same time. You win. Hmm. I'm going to keep Unyielding Spirit, I think. This is a really good Unyielding Spirit matchup. Playing against a deep deck. Yeah, Spirit on Hecarim. That can win. Fortunately, we drew the other Unyielding Spirit, but we got some power here. Kind of did that quickly. Whoops. My saplings. Oh, as well. Fresh is worth at least twice as much. So I need to have. I only need to have one Set mana. I only need to assure to have one spell mana so I can go like Hecarim on six and then um, Unyielding Spirits on seven. Hmm. I'll save this. Yeah, save this Ruination for after. After we Unyielding Spirit the Hecarim. Well, that's not ideal. He was not a good card against Thresh. Unleashed Spirit. Or I guess, you know, Haunted Relic is the actual card. Basically, I just need them not to be able to kill a Hecarim. The problem is, what do I do? If they just go to combat, kill my thing. Four out of six, what do I do with this? I should probably just block. Is this one I just ruination?
And I may really need this ruination later on with Nautilus and a whole bunch of sea monsters. How does Mark of the Isles work on Unyielding Spirit Hecarim? Yeah, I'll give him. Yeah, the. It'll get the plus two, plus two from Mark of the Isles. Um, I don't think Mark of the Isles says until end of turn, but it just says it's ephemeral. But ephemeral things can't die, so it doesn't it doesn't matter if Hecarim's ephemeral or not. Into the darkness. 23. Just debating, do I Vengeance or do I Hecarim? I guess I Hecarim. Because one jettison is only four. And they're eight away from deep. Should be able to just unyielding spear at this the next turn. Wish we had sharks that we were bringing back also. Yeah, Ruination is... Yeah, that was that was on my list of winners for patch 1.2, and that definitely has happened. Yeah, Ruination looks really good these days. Basically, every Shadow Isles deck, I think, need, needs at least one Ruination. And a lot of times, I, I like, kind of wish I had a second. A lot of the time. But yes, every... Um, how are they going to devour my Hecker? Oh, they, oh they're going to Riptide it. Yeah, Riptide. Hmm. Yeah, I probably should have just Vengeanced. Like, why would you play a turn 7 Nautilus? When you're not deep like that and everything. It's because you have another Nautilus in hand, right? You, have, you just have multiple Nautiluses in hand. That's like the reason to, right? So really glad I didn't spend that one mana on the Islander and kept it so I had 10 mana available. But not really glad that they had to devour the deep, like one of the cards that would keep, keep them alive. I get one damage across. I just had one shark. Yeah, if they, like if they would have just played like a normal thing, not a thing that also had removal, you know, I would have had that extra. I would have had one extra attacker. And. You know, I've been able to. At that point. 
But no, that was just a, it was a bad use of unyielding spirit on my part. It was unprompted. It was unnecessary. They passed to me. I could have just untapped and then attacked with Hecarim. That might have... I mean, that didn't... It was good that the 2-1 wasn't there for whenever I... Yeah, you, you can tell I'm getting tired and it's getting late. <laughs> I've had a long day today. Um, but yeah, it was good that the 2-1 wasn't there for the 10-mana uh, the spell. But yeah, maybe we would have gotten extra damage in with it earlier. Okay, one more game. Let's get this winning record. If Lure of the Depths wasn't a card, Deep would be fine. A lot of Deep decks don't play Lure of the Depths. The one that I play, I have one Lure of the Depths in there. But it's not, like, that's not even a... It's not really a part of the deck. So I like Glimpse Beyond against Ezreal. It keeps... Ezreal from leveling up and draws you too, like in response to a removal spell. But the problem is I have no good cards for the Oblivious Islander. Sure is gone, there we go. Eh? That egg. Did it move? I could have gone super aggro and gone Islander targeting Islander. Which targets the hapless aristocrat and attack for five on turn one. All in the wrist, see? And then have nothing left and just be like, alright, well I dealt five on turn one. Can't don't have anything left. Yeah, Islander is definitely Definitely a problem sometimes. Sometimes you don't get to actually play it. There's two in the deck, and there's just one hapless aristocrat. Like these one drops, these one drops can be pretty bad. Just in general, that's that we're kind of learning about the format is that the format's so powerful and so like like mid rangey powerful that like these one drops really do lose their luster quickly, especially if you're not playing against acro. So there's only there's three total. There's like all th like we had all three of them. Honestly, it's possible I should have just mulliganed the Oblivious Islander. Fresh catch? Well, it was fresh. Yeah, back, back just in time, Rex. So, y'all, did y'all get any uh, anybody getting good stuff in the weekly vault? It is vault day. So, you know, happy Vault Day to everybody. I, myself, did not get anything particularly good. But, obviously, I have, I have like, all the cards right now, so it's just it's basically, basically getting shards. But I still just got the Champion Wild card. I got one Epic that I didn't have. I don't remember what the card was. I got one. I did get one epic. What is gained when they return malevolence? Not all mean well. Um, so yeah, I got like the one champion wild card, one epic, one rare wild card, some common wild cards, and then like 3,100 shards. I remember that. Nice, you got a Gangplank in the Vault. That's good. Getting a champ in the Vault is not super common. So yeah, that's definitely good, getting a champion in the Vault. Um, and then also enough shards for enough shards for two extra champs. Very nice. So perfect.
It's a big place. Let's see all of it. Don't we have? Okay, no, we don't. We have Soul Shepherd. We don't have the other two drop. The two drop that the the card that people just don't play enough of in these decks is a card that I don't even remember the name of. What's the you know the two mana card that makes things ephemeral? That card's amazing. It's a card people do not play enough of in these decks. We play that in the uh, They Who Endure version, and that card was just spectacular. It's the name of the card? Sturt, Sturt Spirits? Sturt Spirits, yeah. Two mana, three two. Uh, um, attack, you give something plus two plus zero and ephemeral. Don't have Will of Ionia. So Thermogenic Beam doesn't work. They gotta have Will of Ionia. Please don't have it. Alright, they don't have it. We get to attack. Unfortunately, next turn will be turn 7. Don't get to Unyielding Spirit, but that's okay. Unyielding Spirit's not the best against. Out. That anyway. Hmm. I wonder if I should... All right, so that's the that's the not greedy play is just go straight to attacks. That's the ungreedy play. I do have Ezreal out here though, leveling up and everything. Maybe I should go with the greedy play. The greedy play is play Soul Shepherd plus Shark Chariot, and then attack. Time on with or without you. Hmm. All right, not greedy. Usually in greed, yes. Silent as death. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna ruination this next turn. Yeah, Shark Chariot's a really cool card. I know, I, I agree. I just like that design for sure. That's a cool card. We'll bring peace to Ionia, whatever the cost. Alright, Karma's not bad. But today, same same with like the, the ephemeral mid-range deck that we played earlier. Like Hapless Aristocrat was really bad in that deck, and same with Withering Whale. Withering Whale has looked really bad as well. Skill and grace to tear your breath away. This is a lot of damage. You lack subtlety. Don't think they can survive it. 
Clutch attack with the Soul Shepherd. Clutch attack with the Soul Shepherd. GG's. Hecarim is great. The Hecarim bringing back these sharks. And there we go. Spooky horse. Got a three and two. Not bad, not bad. Wasn't the tightest play. But yes, like, I wonder if, you know, like, there's just not, like, many decks that, like, Withering Whale is good against anymore. Kind of, kind of the same, you know, this was on my, this was definitely on my, uh, whenever I, I talked about uh, the patch 1.2, winners and losers, this was on my loser list. Ruination winner, Withering Whale loser. Um, I know, right? Like, they, they're at, what, 14 life and everything I have, just Hecarim, just lethal. Um, so yeah, I don't know. It's, there's not like a great, like, replacement for it. I mean, you have like Grassley Undying. But I don't know, I'm just not, I'm not that big into Withering Well these days. A uh, deck code for this? Yes. Here is the code, and here is the deck list, if you want to, like, it's on Mobile Addicts all. All my decks are there on, uh, or Mobilytics. Okay, I'm I'm working on that pronunciation. Maybe Wraith Caller is good. We only have three Demacia cards. We could probably play a few more Demacia cards. Like Single Combat would be awesome, right? Like Single Combat would be a great uh, removal spell to have access to. Maybe we could fit Single Combats in here. Like, that's a really good... Like, single combat is just a really good card. So, this was Cordex deck. Cordex says, that, yeah, you think you can cut a whale and two islanders and add two butchers and an aristocrat? See, I, I hate aristocrat. I, I want to take aristocrat out of the deck. I... I just constantly hate this card in these in these decks because it just it just takes up room like i absolutely hate hapless aristocrat with harrowing basically it just always gets in the way of my harrowing i just hate this card like this card this card was costing me games earlier with ephemeral midrange we were losing games because we had hapless aristocrat in our deck and because it was in play i just hate that card it's really good against the hyper aggro decks but they're just not those decks aren't around at all. I haven't played it. I haven't played against Burn since the patch over a week ago. Like, you know, and I've played like 20 plus games a day and I haven't even played against Burn yet. I know it's around still, but it's just it's so hard to get paired against it. Uh, yeah, Radiant Guardian's great, especially if you play single combat. Like that, that's a combo. Radiant Guardian single combat is definitely a good combo. So yeah, I could see playing some more Radiant Guardian. We had to worry about how many fives we play, but if we, you know, we start trimming down on like Withering Whale and stuff, that's less fives. Yeah, Radiant Guardian is really good with the Ephemerals, because the other thing about Ephemerals is they they block terribly, right? Like you, you can't ever block with Shark Chariot. You don't want to play your Ephemerals on defense. Like they're, they're just not good at at uh, defending for the most part. Like these cards just don't don't defend well. But Radiant Guardian does a great job defending. It's like one of the best de defensive cards in the entire game. And so it really shores up your defensive weakness that a lot of these other cards have. Like, you know, you don't want a Caretaker on defense. You don't want a Shark Cherry on defense. Can't block. And so on. Uh, no, Rally. Hate Rally. Rally is only good in games that you win anyway. Like, it's only good whenever you're ahead. Not not a fan of rally at all. Just just play good cards. Rallies, yeah no. Whenever everything's going great for you and you're like, man, yeah, now this would be a great time to rally. Well, things are probably already going great for you because you had everything else. You had like cards that were good besides that. We we do only have five champions, not six. So I really wouldn't mind like a, a Callista, 
in here also. Callista does good good offense and defense. Like it's it's a really big body for a three drop. But of course that's me. I like Callista. I like Rekindler. I like that kind of stuff in here too. But but anyway. Um <laughs> Yeah, I mean, Tiana Tiana's a rally that does stuff. Like that's a card that does stuff. I I can I can support playing Tiana much more than playing Relentless Pursuit. Um yeah, or Lucian. I I kind of like Callista more than Lucian. But yeah, you, you could go Kalish, you could go Lucian also. This deck is heavy on twos, as you can tell. So like the, the whole one cost two, one cost three, they basically cost the exact same because there's already so many twos. It's not bad having like an extra three. Yeah, I, I don't think the deck's better with Tiana. I'm just saying that if if you if your brain is forced to play a rally, like if you if you just need to put a rally in this deck because you're just like a degenerate that needs to have some kind of rally effect, I would I would rather play Tiana than Relentless Pursuit. I guess that's what I mean. But no, I, I wouldn't put either in the deck either. Cards that, like... Um, I mean, I like I like the list. Cards that I would consider putting in, like, as we talked about, are, like, Callista um, as a one of Rekindler and Single Combat. Those are the cards that I want. Those three. And, like, Withering Whale... Hapless Arister. Oh, and then also, of course, Stirred Spirits. Stirred Spirits is great. Like, Stirred Spirits is just a better Oblivious Islander. In, like, every way. This card's amazing. But it just gives you more and more twos. Like, I would play this over Haunted Relic. I don't know. I, I won't save this, but I would just... Let's see. If we would cut... I don't know if this will work. If we cut, like, these one-drops those things withering whale it's probably safe to play one withering whale and eh, maybe not if you have more radiant guardians because there's eight demacia cards seven that's 40 i mean put it wait i did put in sequel combats so yeah that would be like single combat stirred spirits um, Radiant Guardian. Ah, I didn't even get into Callista yet. Valfeast also just is kind of garbage. Valfeast is, yeah, Valfeast is pretty garbage as well. Same thing, like, just these one damage things just don't, don't do enough. And then, uh, like, a second harrowing or a rekindler or a second ruination I'll just go rekindler or an atrocity rekindler so let's go in like a little bit more let's go in a little bigger like cards that I think that are better that I would prefer Getting stirred spirits to make more ephemerals for shark chariot. Um, this this version, what what I just did here does make blighted caretaker a lot worse. Taking out like those one mana cards does make caretaker worse because those one mana cards like they suck, and so like you you don't mind killing them at all with caretaker, and so like putting like good a good card like stirred spirits you don't want to kill that with caretaker. Like caretaker rewards you for playing bad cards. So maybe we need more bad cards. Now, Stirred Spirits works works great because, like, the thing is, like, this is a two mana three two. Two mana three twos is like is like the bar. Like this this trades with like everything in the format. Like it's it's just like a really good body in the format. And one one thing about the support, you know, support grant my. Support ally plus two plus zero and ephemeral. This is not a requirement. It's not like Oblivious Islander that's a requirement. You can just attack and always and just have this card on the right hand side. If you want to just if you don't want to use this, if you have good cards that you don't want to 
do you can you can put this on the right hand side putting this on the right hand side is also great if you have other ephemerals because you know you bring the sharks into play and, the, and like you know your shark gets that plus two plus zero from your stirred spirits which makes you know your shark like a five one and they're like dang i really have to chump block this five one shark because i can't take five damage and so then they're not blocking other things so this works great with a shark also um and you know like it works really good you know same thing kind of with hecara like you know you if you have those two, you you attack with Hecarim first, and then Stirred Spirits, and then Stirred Spirits automatically grants like the the Spectral Rider that's coming into play plus two plus zero. So it just works really well. Um, Purify does work on Shark Chariot, yes, because Shark Chariot is a last breath effect. So if you purify the Shark Chariot, then it does not get this last breath effect anymore. Um, so it do, it will not come back. So yes, Purifier does keep Shark Chariot from returning. So I know those are just some things, those are just some thoughts about the deck and everything like that. All right, uh, those of y'all watching on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave those comments too. I always like seeing uh, your comments. Feel free to, uh, yeah, let me know, what you, you know, any of those kind of, like that whole discussion that I was talking about with the deck, these kind of cards and everything. Um, these, you know, like, these Demacia cards are really good. They are, they are. Um, let me discard, I don't want to say that. I don't know, I was really, it's like, so like, we, we did this like with the They Who Endure package, like They Who Endure Atrocity. And honestly, maybe this is my favorite version of this. Uh, I don't know about all these one drops. The thing about these one drops is they're a lot better when you're playing They Who Endure. Um, and yeah, Stirred Spirits makes them better as well. I did like this version. Maybe we need more Thresh. Maybe we need more Rekindler. I don't know. But lots of good things to do with Hecarim. Hecarim is awesome. Fun card. All right. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching some Unyielding Hecarim, and I'll see you for the next video.